Welcome to the show. I'm Lauren Bright. Were King Midas a more evolved sort of guy, he probably would have asked for the kind of touch that the woman sitting next to me has. Diane Rose of Natural Balance in Maplewood is a massage therapist. She also possesses what many of our clients will attest to as a healing touch. Welcome, Diane. Well, thank you for having me, Lauren. Now, what exactly is it that you do? I'm a multi-dimensional therapist. And that means that I work in the emotional body, the physical body, intellectual body, and spiritual body. I'm able to see any imbalances in any of these systems. Excuse me, systems. Now, having experienced it firsthand, I would say that you're an intuitive healer. Yes. I'm a, as I said, I'm able to go deeper into a system and able to detect any imbalances. If there's anything on uh, the liver, if it's coming from an emotional system, if it's coming in from the intellectual system, then I'm able to see it, help the person to heal it and release it. Where do you get this information? How does this information come to you? Many different forms. I, I'm trained in the Eastern therapies and a lot of it will come in through the um, meridian lines. I'm able to see it not only that way, I am visually, I'm able to pick up things and I also sense things on an audio. So it's coming in on all different levels. So you get messages? Yeah, uh, senses. I don't like to say I'm hearing things or just seeing things. It's sensing. A sense that something is off in the body. Now, this is an interesting sticking point because having worked with you, I know that you get messages from people who have crossed over. Most definitely. But you don't consider yourself a psychic, per se. No, I'll consider myself an intuitive because a lot of times when people come into my office and they are having problems on an emotional level, level it's usually because someone is passed on and they haven't worked through issues with them, especially if someone has lost a mother or a father or a brother and it was very fast and a fatal uh, crossing over. I am able to bring them back to that person and they're able to have dialogue. Now, how did you realize that you could do this? How old were you when you realized you had this skill? Um, I was very young. I was 10 years old. And uh, I was outside playing with my brother, with my, with my friends. And there happened to be two police officers that walked by me. And they were going directly to my home. They knocked on the door. They were there for a while. And I had a very sick feeling. I didn't feel comfortable. I felt lost. I felt out of sorts. I wasn't quite sure at 10 years old what I was actually sensing, but it wasn't right. I immediately went to the door, went upstairs, and my mother was very, very upset. And she looked at me and she said, your brother just drowned. He was 16 years old. With that, I turned to her and I said, Mom, he's not dead. Don't worry about it. And she looked at me and she said, yes, Diane, he has passed over. He is deceased. The problem was I did not understand death because my brother was there and I sensed everything about him. From hence forward, uh, for the next 10 years, a lot of people died in my family, and I still was in dialogue or communication with them. So each person that had died, the precognition got deeper and more elaborate. I think they were like tools in my tool belt to get me used to doing what I'm doing right now. Now, how did you go from realizing that you had this intuitive gift to using it to help people heal themselves? I, my first job was actually working on a woman who had a lot of physical issues and a lot were in her feet. And unbeknownst to myself, I started to reflexology on her. And she started uh, to feel much better. But her husband had crossed over to the other side and I started describing her husband to her. And it just made her feel so comfortable, so warm, and so connected. And that there was no division from this life to that life. When you get this message or this feeling, how does it come to you and how do you verbalize it? Is it kind of like a charades or you get very clear? No, um, it's almost as if I'm on the sideline. I've stepped over here and the information comes through. I receive visuals, but it isn't like you're sitting right there. It's diffused. I, I get the sense of what the person was all about. I call them honey buns or I call them crumb buns. If you were a honey bun on this side, 
when you cross to the other side, you're going to be a honey bun. I can uh, describe their likes, their dislikes, what they passed from, how they were feeling. Um, you get a strong sense of what the person was all about. It means nothing to me because I don't know the person, but to the person sitting across from me, they can relate and they feel comforted. Now, I'm sure there's some people out there that this makes complete sense to, and it's, it's just a natural progression of the reality they embrace. There are some people who will instantly say, that's impossible. It, it, oh, skeptics have come through my door uh, constantly, and they're like, they sit there with their arms crossed, no, no, no. And then when I start talking about their deceased father or brother, it's, it just leaves them. It just leaves. Because they know truth is truth is truth. Now, do you feel that those who've gone over to the other side come back to give you messages because they want to help their loved ones heal? Generally, um, the person that will come in, the patient, the people that are coming through from the other side are definitely there to help, to give them their strengths, and it, whether it be through business, anything that's emotional support. If a woman can have a child, she's having issues, it'll be a um, supportive grandmother that'll come to, through that's holding the baby to tell me she will get pre pregnant, it's a matter of time. And when I give out names to these people and I start really pinpointing accurate information, it really helps them. Do you ever have to sugarcoat information? Do you ever get negative messages or news that you're not comfortable passing on? I would say yes, I receive information that I do not feel comfortable passing on. Do I sugarcoat it? No. I've tried to sidestep that and if they're sending me the information, it's meant to be said. And, and I will not do that. How have you kind of honed this skill? Was it something that you really needed to learn to discipline and to focus? While other people were going to elementary school, middle school, and high school, I was fine-tuning this just in my own life. As I mentioned earlier in our conversation, I had a lot of deaths in my family, and each one allowed me to digest grief, loss, a, a gamut of emotions, so that when people, I am empathic, when people come into my office, if I've experienced that emotion, I can see it in others. It just permeates me. I go through everything they're going through. I'm a human scanner. Well, and now also as a massage therapist, you're trained in a variety of different um, schools of massage. Correct. How do you know what to use on the person? It's a total sense. It's a total. I can go do a BSCMT, which is massage therapy. Um, it is deep tissue or a therapeutic, I can go into shiatsu. Shiatsu is my framework. Historically, shiatsu practitioners were blind because when they touched the body, they were able to feel the current, the heat, the movement, the blockages. So they were blind. Then I'm also trained in reflexology. Each reflex, foot point, each reflex point on the foot is uh, related to an organ in the body and also cranial sacral. Well, I think it's interesting because a lot of your specialties come from very ancient paths and being an intuitive healer might sound like a space age newfangled idea, but it actually has roots that go back as far as human history. Yeah, it, it was the first form of healing. It was uh, how they would uh, work in opening up the system. Now, clear it. I also think it's important to note that you work in conjunction with traditional medicine. You Almost definitely. You would never tell anybody to stop taking medication or to not go. No. Uh, as I say to my clients when they came, uh, come into my office, if you're going to have a heart attack, I I'm not going to go. So you have to um, have go to the medical community and the alternative community. What I preach is preventative medicine so that you don't have to go on meds to help you, but if you're on it and you need it, that's what it's there for. Now tell me a little bit about the name of Natural Balance and why you chose that name. Well, that's what I'm trying to do for everybody, to get them into natural balance, and that is preventative medicine, so that you do not need to take medicine at all. 
Why do you think that it's so difficult for people on some levels to believe that there is another path outside of traditional medicine? I just think that's what all they're accustomed to. They haven't really looked into other areas. And I hope that I'm able to bring that to other people. I hope I'm able to, the alternative community can bring that to say, hey, there isn't just one road. There are many arteries that come up it. Some people benefit from the alternative way. They can get farther. We are organic beings. We need organic substances in us. If we keep putting artificial means into our system, we're not going to flourish. The system does not have food at all. And it throws it into one organ and another. And eventually that organ will start to fall apart. Now, when people walk through the door, and I, we've already discussed that you will kind of in, to intuitively decide how you're going to work on them. There are some people who walk in your door who you never actually end up touching. No, not at all. What is that like for you? Because that must be a very strange experience on both ends. Okay, as I say to my clients or patients when they come through the door, I never know what I'm going to do. And the minute I go into my treatment room and we shut that door, it's either I could be on an emotional level with them, I could be on an intellectual level, spiritual or physical. I never sit there and pre-design anything. The client does, the energy I'm feeling. I could be sitting there and talking on the other side with someone for a complete hour. I could be talking to them about their emotions and where they're blocked and where they need to open up. And then I will design some food to be able to open that system up. Is it a draining experience for you at times? I, I can't say it is a draining. It's, I go through their energy. I figure out what's going on. We have dialogue about it. I present them with the best course of action to put their system back into natural balance. <laughs> and then we move forward. But I think a lot of people really need my touch or the energy that passes through me because they get up and they are orbiting. They're so light and so airy. Well, I think so many people are out of touch, literally, with their Self. own needs and their selves. All right, well, when we return, uh, Diane is going to tell us how we can tap into our own intuitive healer right after the break. Stay tuned. It's so easy to get caught up in the rush of things. Managing school, your job, and your friends can be a full-time task especially when you're starting to drive. But the one thing teenagers don't understand is that combining the two means dangerous driving, not only to you, but to the others around you. Don't drive dangerously. Welcome back. I'm Lauren Bright, and I'm talking with Diane Rose of Natural Balance in Maplewood, New Jersey, an intuitive healer with an unusual gift. What's even more unusual? The fact that she believes we can all, to a certain extent, harness similar abilities to, to bring more healing into our lives. Really? Yes. How so? Um, one of the major reasons how we can do this is uh, breath is a, a key here. The first thing we do when we come into the world is take an inhale. The last thing we do is take an exhale. Life is a succession of inhales and exhales. When we are frightened, we hold the breath. When we're scared, we panic, we pant. When everything is fine, there are nice inhales and exhales. We don't even have to think about it. Prana is feeding the system. It calms the system down. In order to be able to read the person across from you, you have to be at peace and you have to be calm. There can't be toxicity in the body. If there's toxicity, you're not reading the other person, you're reading yourself. You do not get a clear, clear essence of the other person. Well, the expression, go with your gut instinct, if yes. your gut's all filled with gook, you can't really... So clearly read it. Yeah. Um, go back to what you mean by focusing on the breath. Is that as simple as stopping and forcing yourself to be conscious, conscious of the breath? Of the breath, the inhaling and the exhaling. Most people hold the breath all the way up in the diaphragm. They don't take a complete breath. 
that will slow the system down and then you come up and down. People can handle a lot of things. They can't handle it too high or too low. It has to stay somewhere in here. That's the expression flatline. So people can't handle that. That's one area. The other area is what you put into yourself. Now, I was going to say this because having had the experience of, of, of being worked on by you, I know that you have an almost medicinal respect for food. Almost definitely. It's there to feed the system. I wouldn't put anything like sugar, gluten, wheat into the system. It really clogs it down. Um, I have designed a green drink, and that consists of dandelions and kales, parsley, Swiss chard, red chard. It also has lemon in it, ginger in it, parsley in it, and cilantro. All these green vegetables add iron to the system. Iron attracts to oxygen. And that brings up the energy level. It clears everything in the system. It pushes toxins out. So again, clear of mind. Now, you're um, very observant when it comes to people's coloring. And yes. what does that help you diagnose? The entire system. If you're looking at it, doctors use this too. Uh, we're talking about Western and also the Eastern medicines. If you're looking at a system, a face, and it's very red, heart right away. There are heart problems. The nurses will even say in maternity, if there's a redhead coming through, watch the heart. All right? Pal is usually the lung or the immune system. Dark circles under the eyes are always representational of the adrenals, the kidneys. There's, they're very taxed. Um, uh, discoloration around the mouth is telling me digestive tract. It's also telling me that the intestinal tract is off. Also, bear in mind that each physical organ not only represents a physical function, it has an emotion attached to it, has a spiritual action attached to it, and it also has an intellectual thought. I can't take more of your emotions over here while I'm working or talking to you now, or your intellectual thought and put it over here. It's all wrapped up in that pretty package. So if I'm going out in the, into your system and you tell me I have asthma, I also know that this person has had a lot of grief in their life. So working on releasing the grief, allowing that person to cry, to release the losses in their lives, allows them to heal the lungs. And, and find balance. So when you're working on one system, you're working on all systems across the board. Now, the densest part of us is your physical form, but it is not solid matter. The bones are the deepest and the densest part of us. It's not solid. It takes minerals in and releases minerals. So we're totally porous. If you're totally por porous, you can be manipulated and opened and changed very easily. Which, again, becomes you really are, in many ways, what you ingest. Almost definitely. Are there any blanket recommendations that you would give people in terms of avoiding, we've mentioned certain foods, that um, gluten and sugar, um, but acidity. I know that an alkaline... Alkal alkalinity and acidity. The more acidic you are, the more you want to go into a state of dis-ease. Doctors even want to keep you as alkaline as possible because they know the disease cannot happen in an alkaline system. A dentist even knows now when they're doing root canal, instead of putting any medicine in the canal itself, they end up putting alkaline material because nothing will breed in it. Now, what in very specifics would you um, suggest in terms of ingesting more alkaline foods? What are some examples of green vegetables? would be um, meats, um, legumes, rice. I would really avoid, avoid like the tomatoes, the eggplants, the peppers. Sugar is the biggest killer, and sugar feeds cancer. So you really want to stay away from those, those foods. Now, I know that it's impossible for anybody to eat an entirely clean diet without revamping everything, but these are recommendations that people can kind of implement into their life little stages at a time if need be. But well, Rome wasn't built in a day. So you're going to start maybe uh, start adding more vegetables. You might omit you know, some of your cookies during the day. And as you move forward, you'll omit more 
and you'll take in more of the healthier foods. It just, it's a natural progression. Once you start to feel good, you want to stay feeling good. What role does stress play in knocking people off of balance? And what are some recommendations you have? Breath. Right away, the breath will bring down stress. And stress definitely is a number one killer. It goes right to the stomach and it throws air worry. Acidity goes all the way up and then the person came from. It's crippling. It's absolutely crippling. Now, for someone who's never had the um, ability to read energy or that I know of, um, explain to me what you see when you see a person's energy or their aura. What does that look like? Well, first of all, I think everybody, and I want to address this first, can read energy. If you walk into a room, let's say a party's going on, and you look around and you go, oh my goodness, I'd really like to get to know that person. That person seems so happy, so upbeat. Let me go over and meet that person. That's reading energy. And you're right. just being drawn to a positive. Right. Opposites don't attract. Similar energies attract. The law of attraction. And other times you can walk in, whoa, I don't want to get near that person. I don't trust that. There's just something that's off. That's reading energy. What is for you the most fulfilling aspect of what you do? When a person comes in and they're able to connect with someone on the other side and it's someone they haven't been able to connect to and they go out literally crying and so happy that they feel so good that they've kind of made contact and it's helped them move on their path. Anybody that I'm able to help on a physical level. I've had people come in there with restless leg syndrome that they've had no relief and I start working and they never have a problem again. That must be very rewarding. Um, we talked a little bit about skeptics and I do think that unless you've experienced what you do firsthand, it's very difficult to believe that it's possible. I've personally benefited from seeing you when traditional medicine has offered no help, and I've been lucky enough that they weren't extreme things, but these were problems that I had that you very quickly and easily diagnosed, diagnosed and, and ultimately cured. And that, I think, is an interesting thing about you because you do not go forward putting yourself forward as a psychic, mm -hmm. which would get you, I'm sure, people lining up outside your door. But it's more of a word of mouth thing, and I think that that's a wonderful testament to you that you haven't ever tried to manipulate what you do to gain that kind of widespread notoriety, notoriety or attention. And um, are people sometimes surprised or shocked that and they don't know what to expect? That's uh, probably, I'd say, a good 75% of people who come through here, they're not quite sure what to expect, but they have heard of me and they want to experience what I do. It's not only to the United States. I'm very, very lucky. I'm an international therapist. I have people flying in from all over the world. And that can be quite amusing at times because I don't know every language out there and somehow they receive what I need to say. It's intuitive healing right. is the international language. Yes. Do you see people on a very regular basis? Are there some people who kind of drop in every few months for tune-ups? I never stand there with my calendar wide open. I usually say to people, you'll know when to come back. Unless a person is really in a state of dis-ease on any of those systems I spoke about, I'll say, you really need just to come in for a couple times just to get your system over the hump where all the circulation systems are moving and then you can go into a maintenance situation. Is this something that you can turn off when you want to? I should think that it would be <laughs> a pretty distracting thing to just <laughs> have energy jumping from you at all different directions throughout the day. It can go, if, when I walk out of my office, it can go pretty much dormant unless I'm walking down the street and I see the walking dead or something is really out of balance with somebody. They you have to go back and explain that, because what is the walking dead? Well, that you can see that someone's going to pass. And then, you know, it's I call it spidey sense, everything comes up on high gear. Is that hard for you yes. to not go to that person? And it is extremely hard. But even if I do go to somebody who you know is going to pass on, no matter how much you put the 
hands on them, the current isn't moving, it's dormant. Okay, you can look at a plant, right? And you can say, oh my goodness, it's dying, right? Well, I can look at a person and say, oh my goodness, it's dying. It doesn't have the life. The fluidity isn't happening in it. The color isn't there, it's the same human beings. And I should think you also have um, a happier note, the advantage of seeing somebody who came to you a uh, month or two before. With oh, tremendous. A rebirth of a soul, I call. It is amazing that you can just take a double take and say, oh my goodness, look how far you've come. And I say, pat yourself on the back, because they do the work, not me. Exactly. You give them the directive, but you can't. You're, right. you're, you're not making them better, you're informing them. Right. The tools. And allow, giving them the tools to, to help themselves. Yes. All right, wonderful. It <laughs> was an incredibly illuminating conversation right. <laughs> with Diane Rose of Natural Balance in Maplewood, New Jersey. And thank you for giving us a very interesting glimpse inside your very unusual world. Well, it was thank a pleasure. Thank you for having me. You're very <laughs> welcome. Um,